Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new week of Ultimania. We have another rising set of contestants this month. We, this week, we have we have Kazia in the pool. Let's see if he can make it to see if he can make it to become a third third time champion, or someone will be quick to take his place. Plenty of contestants here show, showing up for this rousing set of battles. Now we will begin the shuffle process in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now it's time to begin this, this week's Ultimania. So it looks like it's Prog Rock Fury versus LP. Let the battle begin. In Electropankton. Oh, that's a sad state of affairs. Charizard got got stuck in the water. Oh, Pokemon, Pokemon Trainer got the final smash. And that's a knockout. We're now down to 4-4. Four, four. Little Max going to have to use some Pokemon action of his own. Unfortunately, Vulpix's shot is not going to hit. Uh, we're pretty even between pretty even between these two contenders and Charizard has just obtained his final smash oh nice job um, guarding that nice job guarding that uh, hill there but it's only a matter of time before the stuff gets evened up again yep Sorry, but the jump punch is not really going to help you out very much in this stage if the stage is um, levels be moving. Little Mac has his final smash. Question is, is Big Mac going to come out to play? Hey. 
Nope. Unfortunately, he didn't have much time. Charizard made a good choice trying to escape from him as fast as possible. And of course, Little Mac was too busy fighting an armadillo to be able to make the Smash Ball. So it's only a matter of time before Squirrel uses his final Smash. And Little Mac missed with his um, KO Punch. Oh, with that Hello. shout. Hey, Roshan. Hello. It's Prog Rock Furry versus... Prog Rock Furry versus, versus LP. I'll, uh, go ahead, I'll go ahead and send you the um, link right now. Well, it was Double. Little Mac versus Prog Rock Furry. Winner is LP. Oof. Rip Rain. By the way, um, how's everything going? Good. Oh, I have kids in the chat. Oh, they'll be okay. They'll be. They'll be in the call soon. At some. LP will be facing off against Tico in the next round. But right now, it's Adrian's Beans versus Adrian's Beans versus Drakar. Sorry, I thought I heard, um, sorry, I thought I heard, um, fingers for a second. Two. Nope, no fingers. Yet. Hey, I'm the one who doesn't exist, Kit, not you. Oh, there's Kit. Hey, Kit. Uh, hey, uh. How you doing? Hmm. You guys having an okay day? Yeah, doing okay. I had to quickly make myself something for lunch before Ultimania started. You two certainly having fun juggling. Good shot. Yep. Oh, that did shocking little damage, though. Yeah, Jigglypuff, Jigglypuff just got his final, just got their final smash out of it. On this level, it's small enough; it might not be useless. Yeah, but at the same time, though, um, Mewtwo had um, Metal Form active at the time. Oh, so even the launch effect is not. Yeah. Yep, Jigglypuff's trying to shoot them. Shoot, trying to shoot them um, rockets or whatever those are supposed to be. So oh, how is the imaginary fit? Ooh, gear him, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna say, how is the imaginary physics cat today? Good. I am so tired. I have been trying to find things to do, but I've had to focus on like just tiny little tasks to try and mm -hmm. just do something. I legitimately have no idea how I moved 
the icon for Rick Griffin's server are away from my stuff. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> Oops. He's opened up his prompt this month, by the way. Dude. Yeah. I can't. I, it's only been two months. My last sketch, so. And I'm not. I will not even. I will not even bother submitting a prompt. Yeah. I'm yeah, I'm the same I will way. not get one. And I'm not at a um, high enough tier to um, warrant it. Sadly, I've been. I have. I am financially better now than I was before, but it's still That's good. a. Um, but it is still. Oh, wait, did you also get one? Oh. That's good to be cautious. Good to be, good to be, cognizant. Did you also get a a, a sketch for the water park one? Can't I can't remember. No, I got a Hall I got a Halloween one. I got I got all of doing doing the a scene from the ring like an imagine. Oh right, right. Oh, that was the last. One. If anybody can up and over, it's oh, dang! If anybody can up and over, it's Jigglypuff. Yeah. Oh, that was an attempting sneaky move right there to immediately use Sing immediately after your landing. And you two's got this unless something. Yep. And that's the Who's Mewtwo? Drakar advances the next round. Oh, Drakar. I like how they render Mewtwo in this game. They balance, like, the, like, sinew and texture. Like, it's always interesting to see how the different ways games render Mewtwo. Mm hmm. I actually saw one rendering where they interpreted him as having fur, just really, really, really short fur. I like, I, I don't, well, I like the idea of that more. I don't, although I'd have to see it, actually. Congratulations, Dracar. You move on to the next round. Oh, right now it's Ren versus Pants Dog. In, um, Paper, in Paper Mario Sticker Star, and Pants Dog has summoned the power of metal. Power of metal. <laughs> well, yeah, he was able. Yeah, he was able to get the um, metal block. Which you I know what I love anyway, because he's also Steel type. You know, you know what I I really love though, still to this day, is the uh, the music that played for the original Metal Mario. That was like the best Starman remix. In what game? In Mario 64. Oh. Um, when you get the metal hat, it uh, it's just a really good Starman music remix. Hmm. Uh, hopefully, Dan is able to make it because um, he's warming up dinner right now. And Ren just noticed that I was. I've started just paying everybody who tried to paying everyone who's involved. Oh, I don't think that was a good time to use um, <laughs> Super Aura Blast. 
Oh, he summoned Giratina. That's okay. Ah. They poke ah. Poke Satan's ah. on his side. Oh, hi, Dan. Got just I would in miss. time. Oh no, just in time for sweet. <laughs> oh, Mewtwo was able to summon the uh. kid. Right now it's 4 2 to Lucario. Oh, he's winning. Wow. He is actually winning really well. Uh, really well. We have so many foxes that I always forget which ones are which. Uh oh. Oh, he's gonna force him back into Bowser's mouth to get Chomp. You're a. Sorry. Oh, that Chomp just missed Lucario, but hit, but hit Fox. Smart pants, dog. <laughs> Happy Dan noises ensue. <laughs> Oh, Ren was able to summon the Wonder Boy. Oh, crap. I hate that assist trophy, because once you're in it, you're just kind of screwed. Oh, but he was able to... But there he's was still got a pretty guy commanding guy. lead. Still a pretty commanding yeah. lead, though. Get him. Is this... This is Dan's pants dog, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I'm grayscale pants dog. Congrats, congratulations on... That. It feels weird saying congratulations, because it's technically not you. Right, so I guess but I mean, of, I, I guess look, it just says pretend. congratulations because I won for once. I mean, we do, say you congr we do say congratulations when someone wins a bet, so I guess it works. I'd say it works. Oh, look, you get to have a chance at revenge. Oh no! <laughs> but right now it's time. But now it's time to see if the champion will be able to advance. It's Scott versus Scott versus Gabe. Oh man! Three, two, Which Scott is this? Uh, the Scott, the, Scott. Scott the, the otter. otter. Who is not, in fact, a taquito. Just, just, just make sure we're all on the same page on that one. Dang, Kazuya is an utter menace. Kazuya is overpowered. Oh. Ganondorf got 3% in that entire exchange. Yeah, he's... Yeah, he's the heel of the he's the heel champion. Let's see if there is a hero that can conquer him. Hi, Nikazuya. Yeah, all these contests demands a yeah, face and the, on the Fifth Avenue server. Let's see if I can convince him to stop picking Kazuya. <laughs> well, he can't change now because he's the current champion. Wait, no, for next. Since he gets his title or not. Well, if he wins again, then that's because Kazi is. Where should I put around here somewhere? Have you ever had that kind of day where it's like, okay, I just gotta do like one tiny thing at a time. Just I'm having that day. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I did do one thing kind of neat. Um, I finished my um, my ORM uh, uh, library that I've been writing for my own oh, projects. What's an ORM? Um, an object relational model. It's um, basically uh, it's a way to do to map your database onto object-oriented programming. So you can use the objects like you would 
on like your backend server, for example. And when you save the object, it persists to the database. So it basically is a way to reflect your data uh, and utilize it. Uh, and I set one up so that it's supposed to work for like graph databases, like the Neo4j database, which is my favorite. And you can basically give it an object, like a JavaScript object, uh, in JavaScript object notation format. And it will be able to transcribe it into the database code to update or create the relevant tables. Uh -huh. um, Star wrote it, 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 it. Kind of a kind of a niche library thing, but um, I'll pretend I've like been... I understood that. This is kind of like this is kind of like you when I talk about any stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's I know it's kind of a kind oh, of the, cryptic. There was, an, there was a spark that. There was a spark and that was pl that was up there that um, saved Kazuya from getting knocked out there. Oh, is that what it was? I couldn't tell what bounced him. You see the electric spark, that, the 8-bit the electric spark, or the yeah 8-bit electric spark that was floating around there? Oh, what, I didn't, yeah. Kazuya hit that and it knocked him forward, preventing him from getting eliminated. I see. Got shafted. Like, I'm sure if you and you explain it to me from a purely mathematical perspective, I might be able to understand it, but from a comp sci one, uh, I'm completely out of it. <laughs> That's it. Ganondorf got fished. Um, because I know I think you, shit about because I. You'd appreciate the database logic though, because the graph, the way graph databases work, are definitely uh, can definitely be understood in math terms. That part, mm -hmm. I think you you definitely get. Mm -hmm. I just like graph databasing. There's like you, the three big databases you can use nowadays are SQL databases, which is structured query language. And there's like, several uh, varieties, and then there's NoSQL. And there are a few varieties of those, like uh, Mongo and Google's Firebase. Amazon's got one now. Um, now or you can do graph databases, which I think are the most useful. Yeah. So now it's Flodas Mia versus Revy. And uh, and whoever wins here battles again. Whoever wins here battles against uh, Miller. I just think graph databases with modern applications are great because they're centered around relationships. And everything is either a node or a relationship. And what so the way you ask around relationship. So it's just a way of arranging data into um, ways that connect. Um, in traditional databases, anytime you create a table, if you want to relate it to another table, one of them needs to store mm -hmm. like an ID of a record in another table, and then you do a mm -hmm. join operation. A join operation to line up yeah, where the IDs I've, are. I've done that before. I've done that before in uh, comp sci classes. So what's yeah, different about the, the the other version? Graph databases are instead of thinking of things in tables and join operations, you mm -hmm. think of them in terms of all of your nodes can have uh, explicit relationships instead of IDs. The relationship itself is an object that in the database, mm -hmm. it is an entry in the database. And you basically travel along these connections as a path. Uh, yeah, I understand that for, on, a, on, a, on a purely, ob, in a purely abstract, uh, abstract way. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hey, I understand. CC's here, CC's a robot now, yes. so, so oh, she'll be able to tell you. The problem for me with, co with programming comes from not understanding things on a on an abstract way, but understanding things in a practical way. <laughs> yeah, that that is, that can be the trick. Um, like, when because when it comes to the nitty gritty, like, um, uh, it, it gets a little hairy. Um, yeah, that's always been a thing with me, I, especially in my recent math classes. Dealing with an abstract example, easy. Then when I'm asked to, act, then when I'm given a set and forced to, you know, I don't know. Find the I don't know, conjugacy class that that or something something mathematical. It's always like, ah, uh, how do I do that? <laughs> hey, brave! You didn't particularly enjoy programming, as I recall. 
No, no, I did not. I absolutely despised it. I don't like it either, although I have to do it because of classes. Yeah. Well, you guys are using Python, which I know they use in like a lot of practical data science cases. Yeah. But I don't care for it as a language, to be Fuck honest. Python, I fucking hate it. I've heard a lot of like programming people don't like like uh, the com side people tend to not like Python, as my experience. Well, the uh, the uh, more like people who just sort of use programming as like a data processing tool. Yeah, or like the, like data science or lab or lab stuff. Oh, that was a, yeah, that was a massive. You ever, whiff. You ever done any programming, uh, Zero? Never. No. Nah. Wait, wait a minute. I think I recall doing some type of programming in high school, where I had to make like a um, web page of some kind. But that was a long time ago, and I've completely forgotten everything I learned. Mostly because it was in the same class where there was a. Uh, where there was a uh, Bammy machine, a um, multi arcade um, emulator machine. Ooh, nice. That I mostly just spent the time there, mostly so that I, mostly so that I could um, take the opportunity to play that whenever I get done with my classes. I haven't really done anything in programming since. <laughs> I actually haven't, since I'm not in a lab right now, I actually haven't done programming for a while. I think it's a kind of thing that, that I think it benefits in a general education sense for people to know in really broad strokes what's involved, but like, you don't really need to know a ton of it in a lot of tangential fields, unless that's what you're doing like full time. Well, depends on what you mean by tangential fields, because physics, um... Well, in physics, I guess you often rely on pre-made stuff, and it's usually just fitting. It's a lot of fitting curves, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, you do need... I mean, almost every career has some level of computer-assisted stuff nowadays, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think it's, it's good to at least know the basics. We're doing okay. Cool. R right now, Falco is whooping... Um... Sora right now. I, I spent the vast majority of my day watching the first 12 episodes of Kamen Rider Black. And that's Ooh, a I'm, good show. I'm glad you enjoy it. I know you were looking forward to it. Yeah. It is... It's interesting. Because it's like, it's very bleak and grim compared to a lot of modern Kamen Rider shows, but at the same time, a lot of really silly shit happens I don't think was intended to be silly. Now let me go ahead and uh, ask you, yeah. how many of those particular episodes were used in the um, Mass Rider show in America? Mass Rider only adapted Black RX. It didn't adapt Black. Ah, okay. At all. Well, uh, Mass Rider used footage from Black RX, Zeto O, and J. Um, didn't use any footage from Black at all. Didn't even use the Black suit, they just used Black RX. They used Black RX's three forms, and then. Um, sometimes Zatoa and Jay would make it in by accident through their footage choices. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, uh, Kit. Look who's up next. Oh, boy. It's All right, Ark. Your sacred, it's your sacred duty. Sacred duty. It's Haggis versus Circle Pad. Oh, I thought. Oh, that's right. Arcadius isn't Joker anymore. Yeah. Well, no, they didn't use footage from Jay. They only used footage from Zetto well. Never mind. They only used Zetto well footage. They didn't use any footage from Jay. Three, two, one, I, don't think they I like this music. Go. Doing, ding, doing, doing. Yeah, because Masked Rider is such a bizarre adaptation. So bizarre. Really lazy or, too, like extraordinarily lazy. Oh, unfortunately. 
You know, I... Life's about adaptation. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. The only thing that really matters is that in the end, Haggis loses. Yep. Does he, though? What if he ends up winning the competition? How would he yeah, I... If he won the entire tournament, I would, I would, I would, uh... I would actually start conspiring with literally every other player to, like, get him in the locker room. Is that yeah. so? Uh, zero. So I, I do have both Black and Black RX on Blu-ray, but so far I've only watched the first disc of Black. I still haven't forgiven Gifts for calling cats cringe. <laughs> Who called cats cringe? Haggis. Haggis. Because of course. Fuck? Well, actually it would fit that um, Joker would be the one to avenge they have the opportunity to avenge you because of um, Mona. Hmm. Who? Mona the um, kitty cat. Little, the little kitty cat mm. friend that Joker has. Ew. Little talking cat. Look out! The Squishalope! Squishalope, where? Hmm. The foot from Mighty Python. Oh. Except, except it was accessor as it was sandals, because it's on a beach. Mm. Everyone needs a vacation now and then. Mm. Oh. Uh oh, God. scissor. That's a. That's a. Oh, and bullet bill. That was a good combo. Y'all, y'all see the. Y'all see that um, Rick's uh, sketch request this month are up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Except yeah, I think I we were talking I about how we. I'm oh, sorry. I was probably going to say the same thing you were. <laughs> yeah, we both got our sketches really recently, so we're both almost certainly out of the running. Yeah. And How, when's the last time you got your sketch, Brave? Or CC? I don't know why I called you Beard. <laughs> Unless you want to be called by your OC. I actually prefer that you... Really? really... You, want, you prefer being called by your OC? Okay, well, I will call you Brave then. That's Thank the trick you. with having multiple usernames sometimes. Yeah. Like a CeeLo yeah. and Zero, I sometimes mess up. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I I, I, I do get... I wouldn't mind if you call me by Erwin, although I don't consider it to be my main... You know, it's my... For me, it's my OC, not my not me. Not an avatar, yeah. so to speak, just to keep a, a character. Complicated. Sort of in between, I don't know. Because okay. like I mentioned in this in the in the in your server, he is supportive so supposed to be kind of mostly an extension of me. Yeah. At least definitely more so than Leia. Leia is sort of her own thing. Leia's definitely Brave is kinda of like me but idealized, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Kit, I, I just want to. It was. It was, but it got complicated. Yeah. For Leia, I made her. Leia, I Ooh, made her. Ah, uh, why? And from how much? And from uh, her reception, I guess it was a good idea. <laughs> Haggis advances. Circle pad's been eliminated. I've, I've mentioned oh. how I came up with uh, Leia, right? Or where, how, or when I came up with Leia? I'm pretty sure I, think, I have. I think you mentioned when. I'm not sure you mentioned, like, how or why. But... Well, I mean, I know you wanted, like, a counterpart to... Yeah. To Erwin. Me Ooh, Grizz is up. Grizz. That Mega Man's a menace. Be careful. Get me more pictures of Mega Man! <clears throat> He's a menace! I'm just picturing Ridley with that little mustache now. Get me a violin! You know, Black RX was the first common writer to have multiple forms. Sort of. So, I meant to ask oh. about that. Like, these are separate. This, the different series are separate continuities, right? They're not like a. They're um, not like a connected thing, are they? Usually. Usually. Uh, Black and Black RX are. One of the few exceptions. 
Because Black is, Black RX is a direct sequel to Black, with the same main character. Hmm. Uh, but that that's that's one of the rare exceptions. And even then, the Showa era shows are complicated in that regard in general, because they don't seem connected oh, at Mega first. Man, no. But all of the shows from from the original to number one was the one for Stronger. I can't remember. Uh, all had. Uh, this one character that stuck around through all of them named Tobe Tajibana, who's kind of like a mentor guy, sort of. And he, he stuck around through most of the Showa era shows, really. Most of the early ones. The first couple of them. Um, so those are all technically connected because Tobe Tajibana is in all of them. The, the character. But even then, V3 is like very much a direct sequel to, to the original show. So. You know, I was thinking it's sort of like it's sort of like what they did with Silent Hill where 3 is a direct sequel to 1 and 4 is kind of tied in with 2 but most of them are disconnected. Oh, you yeah, let Ridley get the S flag. That was with, a bad with Rider, it's definitely kind of complicated at this point because... We have ones that are definitely direct sequels to other ones. We have ones that absolutely cannot cannot be connected connected with any others at all, because those wouldn't make sense. And then we have Decade, which is which is like um, actually both Decade and Geo, <laughs> which are both like, oh yeah, every single show is in an alternate universe now, I guess. I know Ultraman even kind even of that resolves that by just saying. Now. Like I know Ultraman resolves that by just saying just infinite universes that all can interact however yeah. they please. Just, they'll cross yeah. over whenever they need to. Common Rider tried doing that, but so far it's only been a thing in two TV shows and a couple movies. Uh, so, interesting thing about, um, you're talking about forms in Common Rider and OC, I was actually working on, there is kind of technically in like game terms an alternate form kit has yeah that i have been considering looking at getting art of sometime yeah if when when i have that that mythical fabled uh money thing i hear so much about yeah <laughs> minute i'm actually really optimistic about that situation though i was really really anxious for a couple of weeks but the more i'm getting my code together and the more I've done a couple of assessments the more I'm confident in where I'm at with my abilities nice because yeah. I was really worried for a little while I don't change change is scary you know you've been in one job yeah. for like 12 years you get kind of yeah. so, it, so it, it sounds like you are she going to be leaving your current job I I'm thinking I probably will yeah I I've still I, I really adore the people I work for so I'm still open to 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 figuring that out, but I want to be ready because it's looking like it just might be changing too much. Hmm. Dude, Mega Man is, what is he on today? He's walking past like all the good items. He's just sort of jumping up and down. She's just doing CPU thing. Mm. Like he's, he's just, Mega Man's usually more clever than this in these tournaments. Like he's just, mm. I don't know what he's doing. He needs more he's dedicated for his um, too. Back on the like alternate forms, thing. I guess technically the first Kamen Rider to have an alternate form this was Stronger. Stronger had a power-up, but I don't know if that technically... I don't know. Stronger, had a, Stronger was the first one to have like a power-up form. And then I guess, I guess technically the original the original two Kamen Riders had upgraded forms where they were like permanent upgrades. They, 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 they were permanent changes. While Stronger had a had the first like temporary upgrade form, kinda. Well, we just found out whether space dragons can eat robots or not. Yeah. And then, then like after Stronger, they kind of went back to doing the whole permanent upgrade thing with riders, and then 
Super 1 had different gloves with different abilities. And then uh, Black didn't really have anything. So mm -hmm. man, man, man just has two bikes. That, that's what he gets instead of like a permanent upgrade or an upgrade form. He, gets, he just gets two, two bikes. And then Black RX just straight up has three alternate... Just straight up has three alternate transformations. <laughs> and that was kind of the first instance of like the modern form change gimmick in Kamen Rider. Now it's um, Cam versus Vully. Yeah. So, um, what a coincidence. for some reason, I was going to say, oh, sorry. sorry. No, it's okay. For some I'll reason, tell you in a second. Um, for some reason, Black RX's um, three forms are named as if they're different common writers because they're called Black RX, Robo Rider, and Bio Rider. So it's like, okay, what the heck's going on there? I don't know. You know what's interesting about this level? It always comes off like really whimsical and um, visually interesting. And like if you've never played Mother 3, you don't realize what an utter nightmare this place is. You mean stage? It's called stages. What did I say? I said levels. Those are vaguely synonymous. I was no. Say, I was gonna say if it's. I was gonna say if you're talking about um, from in the game itself, then. It's just a location, isn't it? New Fork City, it's more what it like represents. Like it's it's like So like I don't I'm not gonna spoil anything if you like Mother 3, but Porky is a very bad, bad person. Like he does terrible, terrible things and his city is like pitched as this Wait, utopia. But it's earthbound? not. Hmm? Yeah, I thought Porky was from Earthbound. Yeah. Uh, same series. Mother and Earthbound are the same series. I know, but oh, is he in both games? Yeah. He is. Uh, he's he's sort of a secondary villain in uh, Earthbound and the central villain in Mother 3. Ew, he's the central villain. In, I thought he dies in Earthbound, but I guess I wasn't paying no, attention. He get, no, no, he, he slips away into time. No, he slips away into time. Oh, and later... He slip. Oh, he just <clears throat> slips away? I thought he was in... Well, when he... I thought he was in the Eternity Machine. No, that that happens in Mother Three. Oh. At the end of Earthbound, at the end of Earthbound, he basically, um, after Gigas is beaten, he's basically like, oh, "Okay, well, I guess I'll just uh, slip into another era and does the, like this emergency temporal shift." But in Mother Three, you find out that he's been through time so much that he's functionally immortal, but his body is kind cool. of ravaged, so he lives inside this capsule. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, Mother 3 definitely has an ending for him that is probably the scariest thing I've ever seen in a non-horror game. Like, if you actually think about it for a second. Uh, I mean, I'm the, probably never going to play it, so what is it? The absolutely safe capsule. Um, so, Porky, you, when you, he's, trying to end, he's trying to end the world as it is. He's, he's, okay. he's, he's bored, and he wants the world... He wants to... Um, he just wants to see everything change. He wants everyone who doesn't like him gone. Standard JRPG stuff. Wants to be worshipped. Standard JRPG stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except he's except the reason he's doing it is not he doesn't have like a grand ideal or whatever. He's just got like this childish mind that is corrupted and insane. Mm -hmm. I'll be right. So, back. oh yeah, okay. Um, but um. He, he does some pretty awful things to the protagonist in like the name of his. Okay, back. Uh, he does some weird. He does some pretty nasty things to the protagonist in the name of uh, uh, trying to uh, to uh, end and end the nowhere island. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to think of how to phrase it. But so anyway, when you stop him, when you destroy his, um, like if you played Brawl, you know the big capsule Porky's in that's got like the spider legs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you when you beat that, he gets into this thing that he he made Doctor Andonuts make, which he, is called the Absolutely Safe Capsule, and he seals himself inside of it. And you find out that the reason it's called the Absolutely Safe Capsule is it keeps the person inside absolutely safe, but it also keeps everything outside absolutely safe, and so he can never leave ever. Wow! Uh, and because mm -hmm. he's immortal, he's literally going to watch the universe die from inside of that thing. Jeez. Amazing. Oh. It's, it's it's the most horrifying thing I've ever seen in a non-horror game. Wow. Yeah, so he's just stuck in a tiny little capsule forever. Wow. Yep. 
Spoopy. Oh, um, Vully almost got bored there. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I don't know how Vully feels about that one. Capsule. That's either an oh no or an oh whoa, depending on who you are. Uh, just like, just like Tico, if you read the C the CA chat. Well, yeah, I don't think Tico would know what he was getting into uh, soliciting that one. <laughs> but yeah, the oh, we're gonna be getting into sudden death if um, he doesn't defeat DDD quickly. I'm surprised Sarkai didn't get it immediately, considering who he is and what he's posted. <laughs> so, I'll tell you this though: Mother Three is one, is one of the few video games that has legitimately left me emotion, super emotional. I actually cried at the end of Mother Three. I'm not oh, even exaggerating. Yeah. Yeah, I got me. Because of because of what happened to Porky? No, it's because of what it's because of Lucas and uh, his brother. Mm. There's a very emotional thing at the end. Okay. Yeah. If there's one particular character that um, that reminds me of, the idea of um, becoming immortal causing insanity. Has anybody ever played um, Xenosaga? No. Yes. No. Yes, I have. I have not. Oh no, I'm sorry. I, I was thinking. I don't know why my brain did that. I played Xeno Gears. Um, yeah, unfor yeah. Unfortunately, even though they're part of, the, even though they're part of a um, similar um, thing, it's unfortunately not. It's unfortunately not the not the same. They're like yeah, Xeno Saga, Xeno Gears to Xeno Saga, and Xeno Saga to um, what's the recent ones? Xeno Xenoblade Chronicles. They're like a series of spiritual successors. Yeah, that makes sense. They're 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 similar, but very their own, but very much their own thing. Sounds like. But yeah, Zeno. But yeah, Zeno. But um, there's a character in um, Zeno Saga called Albedo, who is who is a um, child who is a um, biological who is basically like a child like a child super weapon whose specific purpose is to defeat this whose specific purpose is to defeat this inter interdimensional threat called Udu U DO hmm. oh? and he was bur he was um he was a um what's the name of the types of twins that are attached to each other uh conjoin Conjoined twins. There were conjoined twins by the heart. Oh. So the lovely. But um, specifically, um, because of the scenario. By the way, it's now LP versus Tico. Um, oh. specifically because of that, um, and they were um genetic, genetically modified superhumans. One, each of them has a specific. Both of them has a specific genetic quirk. One, one of which, Albedo has hyper regeneration, and his um, brother Rubido, who later becomes um, Junior, has um, age manipulation. Oh boy! But because, but Albedo, but because of Albedo's hyper regeneration, he can never, even if his head explodes, he can't die. He is. Mm. He is effect. He is effectively immortal. So the. So then at that point, so then at that point, it basically um, drives him to, drives him, further into the, drives him to seek out Udu as a mean, as a me as for some type of purpose. I never got to play. Uh, I I have Xenosaga episode three, but I never completed it. But he is effectively insane. Because well, it's an interesting, it's always an interesting comparison, like the idea of, like, the idea of mortality and immortality, because it becomes this question of, okay, what's scarier, the unknown or, like, stasis? Pretty like, much. you know, like, that's always an interesting... Yeah, because, um, mm -hmm. because Same. he realized that he was going to be, a, he realized that he was, um, never going to die at, like, I think, like, age eight. To the point where you would, to the point where, um, to the point where his um, brothers, um, Rubido and Negredo, Negredo was not, Negredo is his, um, Negredo is his brother, but they're not, but they weren't conjoined. 
And as far as I'm aware, only has basic basic abilities to counter Uru. But all three of the but you would see um, Albedo practicing. You would see Albedo like practicing digging graves for his friends and family. Mm. What a lovely, lovely hobby. What a what a healthy what a healthy thing for normal people to do. Yeah. Mm. He, and it effect Yeah, and it basically um made him completely psychotic. It would definitely it would definitely like over time alter your like perception on the value of life if everything's that temporary. Yeah. Ignoring the So Ignoring the fact that when you actually see Albedo um, in game, well, well, his his backstory is also in game, but in like, but in like a big flashback that you're a part of because sci because anime sci-fi is weird. Indeed. Yeah. But oh, um, Yoshi got caught. Is he gonna escape? He does. I think the scariest thing to me about living forever would be forgetting. Yeah, that's true. Because you would, you would, you would start to lose some of those details. Like, there's like, actually a super interesting would, comic about honestly, that. Honestly, if 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 I, there would, you know, if I could theoretically remember everything, then my chance of being, then my feelings towards being increases greatly. But if my brain is as it is right now, that's kind of scary to me. Like, you know, it's one thing to, you know, I just don't want to forget. You know, at that point. You know, it's sort of like you're not even the same, same person that you started out, out as, right? Yeah, Once yeah. You've forgotten almost everything. You know, there's a there's actually a web comic series that I really liked. You know the so you know I, you've probably seen some of my sketches from the artist Kit Fox Crimson, um, who does a lot of comics. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, um, the he's got a. He's got a, a few webcomic series, and he's, he's a full-time artist now. Um, but he's got one called Industrial Revelations that's really interesting. And, oh, hang on, Doggo. Hmm? Forty Doggo demands attention. Kill Dog. Oh, do you guys want to watch Zero Kit? Do you guys want to watch Blazer tonight? Or... I plan to. Yeah. Just a matter of, just a matter of um, when I'll be, when I'll be there because I need to go to because I at about five thirty ish, I'm gonna be going to get dinner, so I might be a, I might be a little bit late, but we can start when we get back. Okay, okay. There we go. When that is. Sorry, I had to. Sorry, yes. I had to see. I can't remember what that is. Care of doggy things. Things. I had to take care of doggy I mean, things. All right, I forgot. I was gonna say something about Leia, and then I forgot. Um. Um, I was, I was, okay, we're saying something about a comic. Oh yeah, yeah. So it was just—it's called Industrial Revelations. Okay, I'll say it later. Oh, I'm sorry. If you, if you can go ahead, I can go ahead. I don't mind. No, I'll just go. So, Industrial Revelations is—it's sort of like a—it's like happening in Victorian era, but it's actually like a steampunk mech thing with furries. And the central premise is that the war that's going on is there's one guy who's been basically inventing mechs for the benefit of like England. And, uh, you find out that he's part of, uh, a race that basically correspond to the Egyptian gods and they are immortal. But this one character, Johan, he's kind of insane because they've lived so long that their memories don't function anymore. They barely know who they are. They, their minds just sort of run out of like, capacity and so they have to like start forgetting parts of their lives or like components of their personalities um and so they it's just an aspect of immortality that i think is often overlooked is that um even if the body persists what happens to the mind uh. Oh, that's what I was going to show you. So I got something exciting. I got a um, work in progress sketch for the a thing I'm getting. Uh, 
very excited for it. And I'm going to put it next to all these sick-ass motorcycles in the chat. Also, Dan, I just noticed your, that your, your profile picture's been giving me the Neko Arc eyes this whole time, and, and I'm now retroactively terrified. Hmm. Alright, I'll put it in voice text. Hey, Dan, uh, this is going to be good. Because it doesn't look like you're muted. Woo! Good. I'm excited. It looks good. Nice. They're gonna be. They'd be dancing. Yes. He's. He's into it. Her not so much. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's very good. <laughs> look at look at him being all. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> simplified adjective. Uh, yes. Easily, easily reduced scenario to to the yes. core components. Yes. It's for, for, for humor. Hmm. It's funny because it's funny. Mm -hmm. Final one's gonna be. Final one's gonna be. Uh. Borderline NSFW. Uh, Good. What is? If not all the way, but... Uh, there's a work in progress sketch that an artist sent me in voice text. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it. Good bullet, Bill. Oh, I forgot. You were talking about Lanlo sending you to making rest for you or something like that? Oh, I was going to send you those examples. I'm sorry. I will do I completely forgot. I'm glad you mentioned it. My brain is um, is not amazing today. Yeah. Dang, how you got dominated. Yeah, kitty victory. Uh, I have had better brain days. Didn't Sarah, I even did Sarah even lose a stock? Oh, they lost one. They lost one. It was a pretty close to a sweep. Yeah. So now it's time for the revenge fight. Dan, ver Dan versus Deary the Deer. Pence Dog versus Demon Child. Who mm. is deadliest? Mm. Oh, there once was a dog and he had some pants. That's very fancy pants. Mm. So, uh, this is an interesting, um, an interesting aside. I've, I've, when I have been like not feeling so good or, you know, I had to take some medicine, gotten really sleepy, I've had to sort of like scale back ambitions. Like there are things you want to do some days, you know, where it's like, oh, I'm going to get X thing done. Mm. I've kind of had to learn that I'm like, no, today's going to be more of a bite size accomplishment thing. Yeah. Mm -mm. But it's but anything is better than uh, not not finding anything helpful to do. So you know, I mm -hmm. I helped my mom with uh, her Christmas lights and everything, and uh, cool. did did some uh, push some of my code out there. And, uh, you know, yeah, they haven't gotten called on dinner yet. But oh, I need to order dinner. Fuck, it's already five. I don't even know what time How it is. How does time go so fast? I hate it. I hate it. Alright, oh, yeah. I was gonna tell, say something about Leia's origins, and then I kept on getting distracted. Um, if you guys are interested, I don't know if you guys actually are interested. I don't want to say if you're interested. Oh no, I'm interested. I, I'm interested. I just, I'm just a little scatterbrained, so I didn't mean to interrupt. By the way, Dan, it's you versus... Oh, uh, Lainlow's the one child. who did this. This, mm -hmm. I recognize this ref. Yeah, yeah, he uh, he's done a few of them. He did oh, done a couple. Yeah, for, that's done a couple pretty, for that's pretty good. Then. That's pretty yeah. good then. Okay. I didn't realize he's the one. Who did. I was just gonna say, so Leia's her pattern is uh, not what it what my original. Design of Leia is not her current one. 
she was originally sorry, just responding to your message. Um, she was originally no, supposed to be just a standard tortoise shell, but during the process of finally getting a ref for her, that eventually changed. So I remember I, I showed like the first one of the first sketches I got her in the chat, and it's like actually yeah. a little different then, if, if you notice. Than from mm -hmm. her current design. But yeah, what? But yeah, Dan, I saw they, I saw your reaction to that. What happened there was that Lucario broke the broke the real and fake Smash Ball at the same time. The fake Smash Ball yeah. knocked, <laughs> knocked the real Smash Ball out of Lucario. Oh, I and it was priority. Um, uh, and uh, and actually, the reason I created Leia in the first place. Partly was to have another character, but and the actually the main reason is I created her uh, around the time of one of Risk Scratch requests because I wanted I think I wanted a uh, I think I wanted a sketch request, but not with Erwin. So I quickly okay. created Leia while I was on vacation in Spain, just as a, oh, I need another character. <laughs> Interesting. Sometimes characters that are organic can be really fun because you you didn't necessarily like I've I've had a couple of characters that ended up coming about as a direct result of like role playing games. Mm -hmm. Both of and my characters those are kind of fun. just both of my characters were created just as sort of a, oh shit I need I, I actually need a character if I want to submit a request because the Irwin was created when when Jonas was doing his retro icons for like one of the first time mm. actually. That's actually when I made my first uh, character, because I was like, "Oh shoot, I need a, I need a, I need a character if I'm gonna submit something." Oh, uh, okay. uh, Ooh. Villa, uh, the demon child eked it out in the end. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> Shh. Oh, I'm like child. really behind on my stream because Lucario's winning right now. Hang on. Take him back to kindergarten. <laughs> Darth Mauled. So yeah, both of my both of my characters are ones I sort of just came up with, uh, like just sort of like, oh shit, I need something right now. <laughs> Uh, kid is a little yeah. more. Kid is a little more involved no because movies. his whole thing is a is actually for a video game. Like he like there's a whole last like Final Fantasy scale game going on. Yeah, I've heard you you want to. I've heard you want to make a video game with your characters. Yeah, I've had some crummy prototypes over the years, but one of the things I'm really excited about is uh, I've got a potential offer where I'm going to do some API coding for a guy who, in return, is going to be teaching me a lot about the Godot engine. Ah, dang it. Oh, did you skip it? I accidentally skipped, yeah. Well, Kazuya, Kazuya, won, take. Won, Kazuya won unsurprisingly. Oof. <laughs> now it's burb on burb. Three, two, one. Wow, Kazuya won. Who would have guessed? <laughs> it's more surprising when they lose. I'd be really, I'd be really angry if they lost because I'd be like, "How the heck did that happen?" Yeah. <laughs> but um, but unfortunately, but again, unfortunately, I, I'm going I, again after this. After this, if after this, I'm gonna try convincing Scott to choose a different character because it's been fun. <laughs> I mean, if he doesn't want to, then there's nothing that can be done. It's his character. I don't want to ruin his spot if he wants to stick with Kazuya. I don't want to be... I don't want to be lame. But right now, I need to use the restroom. I'll be right back. Still calling it, boy. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna get sad crunk off of cheap wine. <laughs> oh, if you're gonna get... That is that is the kind of wine that is that is not that is not a fun drunk. I haven't. I, been, I've had several glasses of wine now. I haven't gone and drunk yet, or at least I haven't felt any different. 
I have a bias against boxed wine because I had a friend who had a serious alcohol mm -hmm. problem and that was his, you know, weapon of choice. All of the wines I've had have been like expensive. <laughs> I just don't uh, I just don't um I it's it, it's associated with enough bad memories that mm -hmm. that the smell or taste even kind of brings back unpleasant feelings. Uh, I don't even Yeah, for me wine is associated with just my parents occasionally drinking it during parties, so I don't have any bad memories with it. So that's, yeah, that's unfortunate. It, it's funny how that works, though. Like sense memories being tied to things like uh, taste or smell, making oh, you also, remember things keenly. I I don't know why it tastes so much better now. Now that I'm not now that I'm an adult. Like when I tried it when I was like 15, and this was in Belgium, so this was, was supposedly, you know, very good wine. Uh, I had wine. I was like, oh, this tastes. I couldn't even take one sip. And I don't, you know, I don't drink it often, maybe at most once a week, but now that I'm 21, it's like, I can drink it. I don't Orange Falco, what was that? You had him. <laughs> Again, Why Orange Falco? I like throwing. Um, because throwing is fun. Um, yeah, no, I think it's one of those, they talk about it being an acquired taste, and that is very true, I think. I, I think that is absolutely a true thing. But it's like, even with the first time I had wine in years, like on my 21st birthday, when I was, when I had this like cheap uh, white wine, actually, I li so I lied earlier, I have had cheap wine. I had this cheap wine in Japan, uh, like white wine. I was like, wait, this doesn't taste that bad, even though it was my first time having it in ages. And oh, yeah. I had before was like a couple of sips. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just more comfortable with bitter stuff now. Now that I regularly drink things, you know, coffee's not quite as bitter, but it's it, it can be pretty bitter. I just I've had to steer clear of the uh, coffee and alcohol in general. Oh, right, because your stomach condition. Yeah, those two things just do a real good job agitating it. But I have yeah, occasionally sense. been able to do taste tests. Like one of the things that I could see being really into if I, you know, were able is um, sake because I had some at a convention recently, mm -hmm. and it was damn good. I was too scared to have sake. I've only, I've literally only had wine. That is the only alcohol I've ever had. I'm too scared to try anything else. Cause, cause wine is like, it's a fruit flavor, right? It's kind of like just fermented juice, right? So there's like, I don't know, to me mentally, that just seems a lot less intimidating than something like beer where it's like from grain. So I don't associate it as much with like sweetness. Gotcha. Does, does that make sense? No, I think so. And and sake is very different in that regard because it's it's it you know it's rice wine, but the thing is they do often flavor it really interestingly ways. Like the one I had was it was very subtle with uh, pineapple and coconut. Mm -hmm. But it I was mean, delicious. Like, wine is literally from the fruit itself, right? So it, yeah, I don't know, to me that makes it a little less intimidating. It could it, it's probably stupid, but to me it just makes it a little less intimidating. I mean, I the, the way I would the way I describe sake is it's like vodka if it was a different viscosity and didn't suck. <laughs> I haven't had vodka, so I can't say. Because like I've said, I'm just turned twenty one, so I've only had like five drinks total in the last few months since I turned twenty one. Which one's orange, Falco? I can't remember which one was orange. You know, I was scared once I turned twenty one that I'd somehow have alcohol for the first time and become addicted, but. That hasn't happened, luckily. Well, look. If you're aware yeah. of the possibility and you are you are consciously cautious, that's usually a good sign. If you it's you when have you think a you're fine. Caution of it, you're, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. It's it's when you don't. It's when you think you can handle it. Like, oh, I'm not concerned, or I'm not, or oh, I can I can take it. It's, that's when you might start to get into trouble. Because I, like I said, I've had I've had some friends who've had. I had one in particular who's who's had a lot of struggles with alcohol. So I've kind of watched a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a, I had a, one of my cousins who I'm, who I was very close. To, oh, I'm still pretty close, but not as much. I don't see him very often. I'm calling uh, it now. This one's going to sudden death on this level. Yeah. Stage, to, excuse me. Went, my, one of my cousins went to Berkeley and just had a really tough time and got very addicted to alcohol. Uh, during his sophomore year, and you know, it really spiraled mm -hmm. out of control. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and usually there's underlying things. It usually doesn't come out of nowhere. Usually there's yeah something else going on too. But 
Well, for him, it was school. It was school problems. He was. He was not. You know. It was a little bit of a oh god, this is much harder than high school because when you do, you know, it is a it is a big. Also, I love. Sorry, I just love how Hero charged that up and that it was used against him. <laughs> okay. I think this is going to come down to sudden. I think this is going to come down to sudden death because this level is so damn big. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it happens. Back to what I, back to what I was saying. Um, yeah, it. it I, that's the biggest reason I was scared of trying it in the first place because I remembered what happened to him and I was like, eh, I get very stressed. I'm, I was worried that I might over that I might abuse it, but so far I've been pretty. Like I said, I've only had like five drinks last uh, in the last like three months, which is not much. Probably more than yeah. that. Probably more, like, probably more like seven, but that's uh, a negligible increase relatively. Um, healthy caution. Healthy caution's good. Mm -hmm. The the interesting thing the interesting thing I the interesting thing I found was that. Um, like right around the time I turned 21, so yeah, my family did an interesting thing. So my family's uh, LDS, as you guys know, mm -hmm. um, and part of the whole Mormon thing is this thing they call the Word of Wisdom, which is basically being really strict about substances you ingest, and alcohol's definitely a big no-no. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I always, I never knew what that was like, but my parents did a really smart thing, and they didn't like pretend it didn't exist. They didn't pretend that 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 wasn't a thing that that people did and so i didn't have this like uh i i think i think when you have kids that are like where the parents want to pretend that it's a thing that's that doesn't exist they want to shield their kid from even knowing about it i think you develop like a certain curiosity that might make you more reckless whereas mm -hmm. from a young age they just they taught caution no my parents yeah, I guess my parents didn't hide it me at all. They, you know, whenever, even when I was a very little kid, they would have it at party. So. Well, because there's a lot of LDS parents that do. Uh, yeah, but Cal I guess California is a very different culture from Utah. Oh yeah, when it comes to that sort of things. California is much more lax. Well, I'll tell you how stupid it is. There was a law they had for a while called uh, the colloquially called Zion's Curtain. And Zion's it was a curtain, like like yeah. Israel Zion. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, the, the actually the Mormons have kind of their own take on what Zion refers to. Um, because uh, it is uh, so it, it, because they thought that um, Zion they call um, I think it's like a place in like Missouri, calling it Zion the New Jerusalem. Yeah, they believe it's like a place in the U.S. <laughs> in, in a, it, 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 sort Israel's of Israel's in the U.S. <laughs> Well, they don't consider Israel necessarily the the. They, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but they they don't consider the Promised Land necessarily to be Israel. Um, I but see. They, I but, guess well, I guess religions do tend to have very wacky things that don't aren't supported by history. But that's a but, that's a new one. Like, they have they have a few every takes time that I learn are something about, Every time I learn something new about Mormonism, it always blows my mind. <laughs> oh, trust me. When it, like, when it comes to a lot of religions, it's always dumber than you think. You know, it is an interesting journey. Yeah, it is. But so the science I, I really curtain. I feel thing. that way about like Hinduism. I don't know. Like I've learned things about Hinduism and Buddhism and a bunch of other religions because my parents, you know, my dad's family is from Nepal, so I, I have a, at least a surface I, level knowledge of those two religions. But I think when you learn about it later in life, it seems different than when you learn about it growing up. Yeah, I mean, I guess Judaism would seem completely wacky had I learned it. I was Dang, say, I didn't I think Hero would take it so well. If I was, Hero. If I was like, maybe not if I was um, like from a Christian or Islamic background, because those are derived from Judaism. But like, if I was, I don't know, some random Chinese guy and learned about one of those three religions for the first time, I'd probably think like stuff like, I don't know, what's wacky? Uh, what's pretty uh, wild? I guess the, there's the whole story of Exodus. I, know, I was gonna say, I, I was gonna say, there's the several things in Exodus. Seas, the parting of the seas stuff, the the the, the this first burn stuff. Pretty much, Exodus is kind of wacky in general. Not help that it's not supported by history at all. <laughs> 
so, yeah. um, so the um, the whole thing with Zion's Curtain, they called it that, and it was basically a law where any restaurant or bar that had well, okay, so it was any bar if it was a dedicated bar, they didn't have to do this, but if it was a place that served food or had oh, like mixed things, about. they had to cover the alcohol behind like a curtain or like a some kind of barricade. It couldn't be in plain sight. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard about that. Which is it's a weird so law. They, which is so it is just pretending it doesn't exist. Yeah, even pretty much. Which menu. is actually even terrifying though it's on the menu. because anybody could sneak anything into the alcohol from behind the curtain. It just was weird because it's like it's it's like playing with object permanence, like treating everyone like they're babies, you know? Like yeah, it, oh, if we don't see it, it doesn't exist. Yeah, but the pro yeah, but one of the biggest problems with that is is like if someone is giving a person alcohol but you don't see like the drink being poured, one hundred percent there's a chance of that person being groovy. It, it, is, it, is a con it is a concern in that regard. There's also the idea that, like, an unscrupulous business could kind of stiff you that way. I haven't really because... been... I haven't really ever been to clubs. Is that a big problem at clubs and bars? I don't go to them. Uh, not... It's super dependent on, like, where, but it's always advisable to be very cognizant of your drinks in any public mm -hmm. venue yes. like that. I'm back. I'll, I'll always be careful. Me. Always be careful. Like, it, even if it's not super common in a lot of areas I, I it bears caution. Most, yeah i guess that's why most restaurants tend to give you the wine glass like straight up instead of hating it yep a lot like of bars, most, will, most, lot of bars show you what restaurants. they're doing I'm, I'm just talking about restaurants in general like most reputable restaurants so like if you i've seen my parents order alcohol and they always you know they never hide it right they always i guess that's probably why just so you make just to there's probably some regulation that says like, you must show to your customers how you're serving it to prevent something like that from happening. Well, because yeah. there's also the idea that there's Why also the idea. Why do I keep idea, coming uh, back in the middle of conversations? Um, <laughs> you were just talking about silly Utah laws. Uh, yeah. Utah is um, such, so. such a state, man. <laughs> it's so different from its surrounding from its surrounding states. Mm. It feels yeah. Like. Yeah, they, yep. we, we do it. We do it our own way, that's for sure. <laughs> have, have I mentioned that I really Vegas. like meatloaf? You're right yeah. next to Vegas. You're, yeah, you're literally like, right next to Vegas. Yeah, I like meatloaf too. <laughs> Bad Out of Hell is an awesome song. <laughs> <laughs> like, Las Vegas is like not that far from the Utah border. And it's like completely different. It's, you know, it's literally called the City of Sin. Oh, there, yeah, there, there, the, the border between Nevada and Utah is a very well-traveled place. Uh, I was and it, it's like night and day, and actually, it's really funny because I remember when I drove oh, to. Uh, I remember oh, when I drove sorry. there once. Um, we were at the border, and you knew you got to the border because we, we drove past, and there was this huge ass store that had a sign on it that said "fireworks and liquor." <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I don't remember anything. Like I, I wasn't really paying attention, but actually, we were. I was there back in 2020. Um, the only thing I remember is just that it was so fucking hot because it was in the middle of the summer and it was like ten degrees hotter than we ever get in LA. Liquor, huh? You know, like I, I, I dealt with yeah. I dealt with like 110 degrees. It was like close to 120. It's it was like it was so hot. <laughs> I just remember I just remember seeing that sign and I'm like, oh look, guys, we found the emergency room still. Yeah, I'm very happy that nobody is omni slurred yet. Yeah. yeah, that's always a it's always a sad way to end it. Haggis lost though. That that's hero is my hero. Um, oh, I didn't even realize but, uh, that was a uh, Haggis's fox. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the interesting so the another interesting quirk about Utah laws regarding alcohol is and they are exceptionally strict about like the quantities and where it's even sold. Like, state liquor stores are <clears throat> very much a thing, and it's the only place you can get anything hard, really. Mm -hmm. um, Hashtag phrasing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they, the actual, like, in terms of, like, they, a lot of, a lot of uh, companies don't even sell in Utah because they have, would have to alter the percentage of alcohol in their 
beer and stuff to sell in Utah because of the limits. Hmm. Hmm. They're very strict about the percentage of alcohol you can have in, in stuff like beer. That makes hmm. sense. Uh, Ooh, oh. I've been eliminated. Oh. That was a very interesting way that really got, that you got eliminated. Kind of oh, just, yeah. It wasn't even a big hit. You sort of just got flung a little bit. Just got juggled in just the right way. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. very full. Are you round, round wolf? At the moment, yes. At the moment, yes. Grizz got an unfortunate what, what education. Food that I really like, so. Grizz got an unfortunate education in, like, being cautious with alcohol. We were at a family reunion one time, and uh, uh, a family member that I I should not specify my relation to them um, got exceptionally tanked. Mm -hmm. And they had like a fire pit, and they're like, "I'm gonna jump over the fire, you guys." I'm like, "No, you're not." Like, I'm totally going to do it, guys. I'm going to jump over the fire. It's going to be awesome. No, you're not. You're going to fall in, and it's going to suck. And they ended up, like, I've they ended up... I've uh, before from somewhere, but I'll tell you from who later. <laughs> so, um, but, like, it went from, like, extra enthusiastic volleyball to uh, growing up uh, violently in a trash can. And so Grizz, mm -hmm. Grizz saw all that, and he's like, yeah, that doesn't look... That's That doesn't look like a good... A good way to handle yourself. Yeah. No shit. Oh, you I know agree. what I want? You I agree. I okay, I picked what I want for dinner. I'm gonna have Greek food. Ooh. Mm, gyro? Nah, just... I'm not feeling very hungry, so just some meatballs and soup. Nice. Um, speaking of which, you, I was gonna say, I was mentioning where I got the... Um, where I heard a similar story from that from. Um, oh, yeah. Any, any of you ever heard of a comedian called Christopher Titus? No. Nope. Uh, it sounds vaguely familiar, but I can't. I'm not sure. Um, okay, then. Do you, have you ever watched the show Titus, then? Nope. No. Okay, then. Uh, nah. So yeah, he, 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 bas he basically... He basically... His comedy beats is, like, him basically just telling the story of his life. Mm -hmm. Where, um... He has like a um, alcohol, like a alcoholic um, father, and all the and a bunch of and a bunch of um, stuff. He was talking about how he, he talking about how um, he got drunk and <clears throat> he was and I quote, he and his um, drunk friends were and I quote, burning a telephone pole. <laughs> I don't know how we got a telephone pole, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that. That's a violation of the violation of the drunk theft scale, though. <laughs> and it's certainly ambitious. So then, so then, I think he basically did, talked about a similar story where you're saying like he was where um, he was going to jump over the um, jump over the fire pit, but then fell face first into it. Lovely. So then he had to go to the he had to go to the hospital, and he didn't. He had to go to the hospital, and he talked about he talked about his experience in the hospital because if your because if your blood alcohol level is too high, then you can't get anesthetic. Mm. But he's so but he's also so drunk that um, he doesn't really feel it. So he's hearing like the when the soap that the scrape off the burnt skin that's really. Uh... Uh, so my dad has a, had a, a funny story about alcohol one time. He said when he was doing, when he was an intern, just getting out of med school, um, he was on rounds one time with the doctor and they had a guy in the ER who was just very hammered. You know, they had to give him a banana bag and everything. And uh, the, the, doc, the, the supervising physician was trying to like show off like, oh yeah, this, you got to, be careful when you take a history from... Dang, DDD. He yeah. said you have to be careful when taking a history from people who are drunk because they just do a lot of confabulation. And the doctor tried to show it off. He's, he, he was talking to this patient and he's like, 
yeah, hey, I remember. Do you remember that one time we went to that party and we did this and this and that? And uh, the drunk guy goes, hey, yeah, yeah, I remember. Only thing was, you weren't there. <laughs> so, like, it was a weird... He was trying to show that, like, you can't believe stuff they made up. Like, even this guy who was tanked was, like, calling the doctor on making stuff up. Mm. God, I have, a, I have a melody stuck in my head. Jody, like, a, oh. I've uh, been there. <laughs> It's Common Order of Black's uh, entire opera. soundtrack is living right in my head. For some reason, I have the moment. opera scene from FF6 since I recently stuck in my head. Ooh. That's a good part of it. That's a good, that's a good song. That was a very weird part of the game. <laughs> it is indeed. Although, Ultros, I think, is fun. I just, I enjoy Ultros. I, 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 okay, my first experience with him is in 14, and he's very much the same in 6. <laughs> hmm. Actually, you'll, you'll meet Ultros pretty fast, I think, hmm. in 14. Because he's only level 50, and it doesn't take that long. It's only a level 50 quest where you meet him, and it doesn't take that long to get to level 50. I oh, actually yeah. was... Playing the I, side was quest? Uh, I was just going to... I was just going to say, I have been... I've only done a little bit of it, um, given the, mm -hmm. the kind of week I've had. However, I was yeah. going to... Um, I was going to, to do a little bit of it, um, it's likely going to try and do a little bit of it tomorrow. Do Does, not even necessarily on stream, or... but, uh, okay. it depends on the time we have, because I'm also, I'm, I'm, the main thing I'm going to be doing tomorrow is Brave and I have a bunch of stuff planned, and that's kind of taking okay. the most precedence, but mm -hmm. I was going to try and get a little bit of it in if okay. things allow. Well, if you want me to follow you along, I'll be there. <laughs> oh no, I appreciate it. I, um... Ark was also wanting to keep an eye on on that because he's available. Mm -hmm. So, but I, you're not going to do any uh, any story quests, I, although there's no, no, I'm right no, mostly, mostly just, mostly just the small things, getting mm -hmm. familiar with things. I wanted to try one mm -hmm. thing. I wanted to try is um, I want to get more familiar with like the flow of like building the the ether gauge and getting to like Ruby Carbuncle and everything. Mm -hmm. And I remember, this is the, get the flow of that class in the game. Oh. So. In my opinion, it, yeah, I've heard that. I, I definitely, I definitely got that impression. I, yeah. one DPS of the things I was told is that DPS's job is just to kill things and look pretty. You don't have to decide the pace of things or make big decisions. It's yeah. you're just so they're actually the hardest class in more com in harder raids, actually, for reasons you'll see. Not because the because the actual like because actually doing damage without dying is hard in that point. So it becomes hard in a very literal sense. Not in a, like not. It's not hard in a in an MMO way. It's hard in a just playing the game way. You know, deep. You gotta trade hits. And, you gotta trade. Yeah, the healers and tanks are more the are the classes that are hard in an MMO way, right? Where you have to you know manage a bunch of people, keep the boss in one spot, stuff like that. Well, more the tactics. DPS is, DPS is you are more the solo classes. You sort of just do your own thing. You know, you're sort of focusing more on the boss than on... I mean, you're focusing more on the mechanics of the boss not dying while, while also doing good damage. Because the thing is, in in harder raids, um, if you don't kill the boss in time, they do something called an enrage, where they basically... Everyone to dies after a certain amount. So basically, DPS is important because you, if you don't kill the boss in time, everyone dies. Um. Oh shit! I'm not hearing when people are talking. Uh, That's because we're all listening to you. Oh, I saw I saw your bubble splash. I thought I thought somehow Discord was messing up. Dan's okay. mic is pretty sensitive. He's flashing a lot. Speaking of, I'm gonna take off. Y'all have a nice night. Have a good one, Hi. Dan. Yeah, Bye. Okay, Dan. Oh. Bye. Oh. Well. I've been talking for a while, though. I don't know how much of what I've said you've been hearing, because I just learned that mine was warped. Oh, you have been? Oh, shoot. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't hear know. you speaking. We you know, the, last I, last, the last thing I heard was you talking about how you were really enjoying the Common Rider Black soundtrack. Yeah, that is the last thing I said, actually. Oh, okay. Oh, so good. Okay. Oh, good, yeah. Dude, that was a rough fight. That level can be kind of mean. Yep. LP continues yeah. the next round. No kitty. The kitty is gone. This is 
so sad. I guess there's still my cat and JC's cat. Yeah, they're Ooh. both in the next phase. Yeah. So right now it's Villager versus Kazuya. I love kitties. Did you guys you I'm, uh, did you guys know that you definitely didn't know? I, <laughs> I totally didn't know that. I, at I all. had no, suspicions, you know. I <laughs> you know, I you said it in you said it in, in little whispers, little whispers, you know, and then at times you're like, guys, you know, I don't know, I got a I got a feeling, you know, I got a I got a rough a rough impression, a, a theory, if you will, that Roshan might like cats. <laughs> Smash, Mayor of Smashville versus the Iron Fist of Darkness. Well, it's funny because like we're all furs, but like you definitely are the most, like definitely are the most cat passionate one I've ever met. Yeah. Oh wow, those two, those two um, bombs just killed Kazuya's um, yeah. um, hammer time. <clears throat> so, so Kamara Black I mean, I've soundtrack always, I've is that's great. So. Like. So the show was made in 1987. That should. Ooh, oh, yeah. God. So that is a good musical era. Hell yeah! It's a lot of like synth, a lot, a lot of synth, a lot of synth. Ooh, I love me some new wave. Yeah. Is it great? Ugh, darn it! And it's like. Mm. I do really, my hands she also does sleep. like a great job of like syncing the music to actions. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like it's really well done, actually. Cool. Uh, I can't believe I'm rooting for the devil child. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because it's cause, yeah. Yeah, look at the right punch! <laughs> Yeah, look at it. Rider kick! Rider kick! <laughs> I do like when. I do love that the Japanese voice actors, when they're doing those, like, signature move things, like, they will, like, like yell it at the top of their lungs or give it, yes. like, just the, the, the heaviest accent possible. Yes. I do kind of enjoy that. Rider punch! Rider kick! <laughs> That's why I loved when they did Falcon Punch and Falcon Kick. In Smash yeah. Brothers, because it's just very on brand. Or the Falcon Punch in um, the um, F Zero anime. Yeah. I will say hmm. one kind of obnoxious thing about Commodore Black is that whenever he performs any sort of action, the screen is just filled with strobe lights. <laughs> oh, oh, that could I get that. that could get tiring. Yeah, I, I'm not even epileptic, but I hate strobe lights. Same. Same. Yeah. They probably have something to do with Although, my anxiety disorder. Although I will disorder. say. The, the HD remasters used on the Blu-ray, on the American Blu-rays, did reduce them. Mm -hmm. Dang, that because edge is vicious. The reason the strobe lights are even there in the first place is because... Um, the toy line for Black had a couple of toys called that were called TV Power toys that would scan for the strobe lights in the specific scenes and do things based on the pattern of strobe lights it picked up. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So it was, a, it was a functional thing. It wasn't, it wasn't like yeah. a, just an aesthetic. That's the whole reason That's they did it in the first place. Yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> a, very poorly it's out, a, a very poorly thought out thing. I'm, yes. sorry, but the, I'm sorry, but the um, idea of using like something that could risk the health and safety of viewers always kind of sort of pisses me off. But also, they didn't know that at the time, though. But they didn't know that at the time. Made, once the show was off the air, it was would have been much harder to play with toy. Well, keep in mind they may not have known about quite. They may not have known the details about the health risks like that. Like you remember when the Pokemon anime had its whole thing because they flashed oh, in the blue, late blue and red. Exactly. So like I, I don't think until they had. Black. That's what I'm saying. Back then, I don't think they necessarily would have thought of that as much of a risk. Oh. Exactly. For some reason, because I I don't know if it's because of my anxiety disorder, but I like strobe lights really freak me out. Like okay. no, I know what you mean. Lights. It's just kind of busy. It's just kind of busy and yeah. and overstimulating. I get that. Yeah. The, yeah. I think thankfully the the the, the Blu-ray absolutely diminishes it, 
because they're not as prominent. They, they removed the wh all the white flashes, specifically. The black flashes mm. are still there, but the white flashes are all completely removed that were there originally. Yeah. I think the problem is, yeah. We're gonna have a new I... champion! Ooh! Thank the Lord. But it's like, I don't know, it's, it's still a bit obnoxious, though. And I think it's I think it's one of the one of the biggest issues with the show is that, that that's just really obnoxious. I mean, like even thinking of it from not even thinking of it from a health perspective, like what, like that's just unpleasant. Like like I said, I don't even have epilepsy, but it gives me anxiety. You know? Yeah. No, I get that. Yeah. Oh, I understand that. Yeah. Now, um, now hearing about the flashes during flashes during fights is now reminding me of the um the oh, it, justice league the yeah the, so it happens whenever he transforms whenever he uses an attack or whenever he um do, whenever he does the the um the the road scepter bikes attack because the road scepter was one of the toys that had the tv power gimmick hmm um, I get it. Yeah, because the, the toys that the toys that had the gimmick were a toy of his transformation belt, an actual action figure of Kamen Rider Black, and the Road Scepter bike. Oh boy! I think were the toys that had the gimmick. Okay. I, I thought, I thought I... there was one more. I can't remember what it was. But those were the three, right. the three primary toys that I remember that had the gimmick. Interesting. And they were they were they were, they were the, the the three toys that picked up the flashes. So obviously, whenever he transforms, it plays a flash for for the belt. You know, um, yeah. belt picks that one up. Then the rider yeah. punch and rider kick. Uh, whenever he does those, it flashes, and those are for the action figure. And whenever the road set, whenever the road scepter is used, it plays flashes for the road scepter toy. It, it, you know, it reminds me of the light gun, the way old light gun games yeah. used to work same, with same CRT thing, same TVs. Same exact yeah. Technology. Yeah. yeah. I really like playing. Yeah, old media loved. The old media loves flashing lights, and I hate it. Yeah. Although, no, because, they, because they removed the white flashes in the HD remaster, uh, it doesn't work. You can't use the toys of the HD remaster at all. It doesn't work. That's... Like so if you own the Blu-ray, you can't use it with the toy, oh, okay. it doesn't work no more. Mm hmm. They remove like the, 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 the white flashes. The white flashes are what the toys are looking for. Well, they don't work on modern TVs anyway. Like you can't play Duck Hunt yeah. on an HD television. Yeah. yeah. But probably part of why they removed them too, because they realized they're pointless. <laughs> yeah. Well, one, they're dangerous. Two, they're pointless. <laughs> so it's, it's a good time to just ditch them. Yeah, I, yeah. It makes sense. Uh, I, I, I think I got to find something to do with my hands, or I'm gonna fall asleep. Do it. Do it. Uh, maybe I'll I build a model. You. Maybe I'll build. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a microphone. I'm on a microphone, you heathen. <laughs> I'm actually playing uh, 14 right now while I watch. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, I currently have my phone in my hand to um, let to like let people know um, who's all um, battling in the I, server. I should grab something myself. I I, 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 I need something to be busy too. I just um, need something simple. It doesn't need to be. I can't do anything complicated. I don't know if yeah, I have the focus yeah, yeah. for that, but I need to do something simple. I'm gonna pass up. Uh, <gasps> um, so, um, maybe I'll build. I've got some simple termagants. These little tiny tyranids to build. Yeah. I could maybe do that. They're pretty straightforward. Yep. Maybe. I haven't done some Warhammer models in a few weeks. Yeah. Maybe. I want to do. I want to save. Anything complicated like my Gundam for when I am yeah. not putting brain. Oh, well, yeah. what, what Gundam Gunpla do you have? Uh, it's the, the first, first one I ever got. got. I, long long he has the first one, the, yeah. Wing Zero. Wing Zero. Oh, Master okay. Grade, right? Master, yeah. 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 The dude's like, the dude's like, the dude's like, this is your first Gundam kit? You picked a hell of one to start with. <laughs> and I'm like, really I'm like, not. Nah, I'm like, well, dude, I, here's the thing, dude. I've been building, I have built hundreds of 40k models. I built a Warhound Titan. And I I built a uh, uh, big ass Tau battlesuit, stuff that required like drilling and filing and gluing. And I think I'll be all right. But 
but um, you know, I, I didn't tell him about some of my more notable modeling fails that I did along the way to learn. Like you meant, but I, I think I can handle it. About gluing your hand to the table or something. Oh God, yes, that might have been one of my worst. I, 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 I what? Okay, so I have a Warhound Titan. I have a Warhound Titan. Um, very large model. I'll try to send a picture sometime. I've got it around here somewhere. Um, very large model. It was, and I picked it to be my first resin model, which, oh no. in retrospect, very oh stupid. No. Um, right, resin models are like really fragile. Uh, they're they're a little brittle, um, but they do pick up detail really well. But they also you yeah. can't use plastic glue, so you have to use super glue. Yeah. So they're a little less forgiving, um, and you have to hold them sometimes in positions while they if, while they dry, depending on the exact type of glue you're using. That sounds obnoxious. It it it's 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 a little more involved, but they are gorgeous. I models. absolutely would not have patience for such a thing at all. <laughs> it's kind of when you get into it, it is kind of zen to be honest. Like building models can actually be super relaxing, but there are stressful moments where like. It's like this is a do or die moment building this. I prefer to build so was, Lego. For a so I have a. So I have, so I have uh, And I will admit, once I get to the part of applying stickers to my gun pod, then I, I'm just like, oh god, why? But I do it anyway because I want my gun pod to look decent, but while doing sure. a little effort. The so so the Warhound Titan. It's got a big old plasma gun. Sudden death. Um. Oh boy. It's a big old plasma gun. And my friends call it the Disco Titan because the gun is a little askew at an angle, so it looks like it's doing the John Travolta move. And the reason that happened was because when I was gluing the plasma gun on, ooh, hero. When I was gluing the plasma gun on, I, I at one point, I at one point realized that I had glued the entirety of my thumb to the workbench because there was a tiny, there was a tiny hole in the glue bottle, and so it very suddenly became considerably less important the exact angle that gun dried at. Yeah. And uh, as I was trying to extricate a significant amount of skin from the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's been really painful. But now it's I could have... Versus bully. I could have fixed it over the years. I could have actually gone back and fixed the gun. I could have like cut it and repositioned it, but I kind of like the story, so I left it. Yeah, it's fair. It's got character. It gives it, like, memories. Yeah. Mm. Silly bird actually, is just very silly thing. The fact it exists at all, I consider a triumph, because I made so many mistakes building that model. I picked a terrible yeah. choice for my first resin model. The fact it exists at all is quite well, remarkable. Okay, how, how painful was removing your thumb from the uh, blue? Extremely. <laughs> yeah? It was very Imagine. bad. It was very Well, it was one of those where I'm like... Where I was like, I called up my, I called my, I called my mom. I got my phone. I called my mom, and I'm like, "Hey, mom, do you know how to remove super glue?" And she's like, "Oh, what did you glue together? Um, my hand and a table." <laughs> how did you manage that? <laughs> well, the problem is the little glue bottle had sprung a leak. Oh, okay, that's how you manage that. A tiny little hole, and so there was a little puddle of glue. And so while I, I had my hand pressed into the table because I was trying to hold the plasma gun against the body of the Titan really tightly. And so I had my hand pressed against the table to give me a little leverage. But yeah, I called my mom and she's like, she's like, um, do you need to go to the emergency room? And I'm like, no, I do not. And she's like, are you sure? Because like, I don't know if that's like a thing they're going to need to do. I'm like, no, mom, I am not going to pick up the table. But drive to the car with my hand stuck to a table and say, hey guys, can you give me a hand? <laughs> <laughs> so I learned, I looked up and found the nail polish remover helps. Um, that definitely helped, but it, it, it was not a it was not a particularly pleasant afternoon, I'll admit. Yeah. Sure you lost his skin there, yeah. I'm pretty sure I invented some swear words. <laughs> oh shit. Oh you oh you talked about our uh I just noticed you talked about our little interactions in uh, in uh, in Jonas's server. Boxer, box. I was telling because Jonas was talking about how like we we're talking about how how I used to be really into video games and be really good at it and really competitive, but over the years I've kind of gotten mellow about it. I'm more of a casual gamer, and how I don't I play video games more to relax and not like 
get screamed at by randos online. Mm -hmm. And then Boxer's like, and yet last night you were like, you, you were all screaming at each other. I'm like, oh, that wasn't the same. That wasn't like... That was, yeah, that was... That different. wasn't the same. That was just for fun. It's different when you're screaming at your friend. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, That's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> for people, you know, or, you know, it's different when you're screaming at randos versus screaming at someone you know. I, I remember it, the exact moment I, I realized... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, because, like, I used to... Me and my brother or my friend would... Or my friends, whenever we played Super Smash Brothers, were, you know... <laughs> oh, yeah, it gets basically animated. what I was like with you is basically how I was like, I haven't changed. Um, <laughs> I, I, I take grudges in video games. <laughs> I just uh, remember the right, exact right back moment. Back the bathroom. Okay. I just remember the exact moment I stopped being interested in online multiplayer in general, unless it was with friends. Mm -hmm. I was playing Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare, mm -hmm. which is a first-person shooter. Um, yeah. And I remember I was playing, there was some, like, 13-year-old on there who was just oh, yeah. screaming at people on his team left and right for picking the wrong classes, for being on the wrong points, for being just this utter little micromanaging tyrant. And at one point in the game, he's, he's playing the character that's this, just this giant-ass sunflower with this grin, just uh -huh. this goofy, happy little character. And the kid uh -huh. comes up to me, and the character's looking at me with that grin, and he starts laughing at me, or he starts, or he starts yelling at me, and I just burst out laughing because I'm hearing this like angry rant behind this grinning, dopey face, I, and the cognitive I dissonance just cracks me up. <laughs> so, but the problem was this makes the kid even angrier, and then we enter into a feedback loop where it, where the angrier he gets, the funnier it is to me. Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> So, so he ended up oh, just losing his goddamn mind in front of like in front of like like fifteen people on a on a microphone, and I'm I'm laughing so hard I'm crying, and I just remember thinking like that yeah I don't I don't think this is huh? that made you want to stop though that was, well that was, it just it made me realize well no no it was really funny in that moment but it made me realize that, like I wasn't. I wanted to relax playing video games. I wanted to let off steam and not like m make life. Like I like competition, yeah, I but I don't thing. like, but I don't want it to be stressful. I want it to be a re uh, a release, an a, a, a more of a release yeah, I kind that. of thing, you know. And I just realized at that point that it was becoming more work than it was actually relaxing. Yeah, I kind of feel this. To be honest, I kind of felt the same way when it comes to. Um... And I'm sorry if this offends, but I feel the same way about MMOs. Mm. It can happen with a lot of them, I agree. Sure. It, it, it's very dependent on who you're playing with and the, the community. I would say that type of thing is only really in 14 if you're playing uh, PvP. It's there if you're doing PvP. Yeah. I'm not, I will not lie. FF14, yeah. though, does have a reputation of having a very pleasant community for an MMO. It's better than the, ma the vast majority, I would say, having played a couple others. Yeah, because there are games and there are ge certain games where it's just like, oh, you, the amount of time, like, you log, like, you have to log in every day in order to, like, get these bonuses and stuff like that. And I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Arcadius, I'm including Genshin Impact because that is a game that does that because it has a gotcha system. Sorry. Oh, I always make I, I always I, make I always make fun of him for that. I I give him all of my free all of my Discord Nitro um, Genshin codes. And I tried Genshin Impact and just didn't get it. Didn't get the gotcha it, mechanics. Like me, start like to bug me. You were supposed to pay for it, and I was just like, pay to win bugs the crap out of me. I uh, like like I don't mind a paid model in something like Final Fantasy XIV because the base game is free and you are you're paying for like their servers to do all the work and and deliver you new you know deliver you consistent things so that kind of makes sense but when you get to stuff like the modern Call of Duty where you've already uh -huh. bought the game for $60 and then they try to squeeze you for battle passes yeah, and stuff I that's when I start that. to get really salty this level I 
freaking hate this stage. It, it is the worst. It makes more sense in 14 because they have to make, you know, or, or World of Warcraft because they actually do work outside of uh, the game to maintain servers and such. Yeah, it's operating costs. Like, the thing with Call of Duty is it used to be that you would pay for, like, Xbox Live or PlayStation whatever, and that was what, in essence, funded your multiplayer experience. Wait, is that not the case anymore? That's what it was when I... Because I haven't well, played no. the Xbox when I was a kid. Well, no, it is still a thing, but what I'm saying is they started adding things like Battle Passes to squeeze extra content oh, out of it. Oh, right. So it is still yeah. a thing, but they got, but they kept, but they added a, they kept monetizing it in different ways. So they even added that... multiple ways, you know, not just, not just one cost. Exactly. So, like, it's one thing, because... Yeah, because it used to be a good deal. It used to be like, oh, if I pay for Xbox Live or Switch Online, that enables multiplayer services for several games. Uh -huh. You know, it's a, it's a decent deal in the, in that context. But then you have games where they'll try to tack stuff on top of that, and I'm just like, nah, nah, man. If you make your game free, and there's add-on content or like you like a pass to have certain premium features, that's more understandable. That that I can kind of, I can put my wrap my head around. But it's it's when you've already bought something and then they can treat it like it's a freemium thing. Yeah, no, I agree. I was gonna say like the... I would have loved, like I would have loved to have played the modern, the Modern Warfare remakes, the Call of Duty Modern Warfare remakes, but their multiplayer is a wash with the Battle Pass uh, well, paid level good. system. I, I mean, the Modern Warfare. Cool. The original Modern Warfare games were really good. I thought. I'm so the remakes. The current Modern Warfare games. Right, and and that's what I'm saying. The remakes, I think, could. I don't know if they're the same experience. I think there's some value to it, but they added on a ton of of garbage. That just I think yeah, even if it heard. was, even if it was, largely as good as the old one was. I think that they've they've sucked a lot of the appeal out of it. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, That's what I've never heard. really. To be honest, I think i Yeah, I've never really liked um, Modern Warfare and stuff like that. Like, if you're gonna give, like, it's only recent. It's only recently that I've um, looked at it. <laughs> by recently, I mean like four or five years ago, when I actually gave another look at um, first-person shooters, mostly with Borderlands and mostly with like Borderlands. Like, if there's going to be another um, first-person shooter that I'd be playing, it would likely be more, um, what's it called? Um, Gunfire Reborn. Mm -hmm. oh, the okay, only yeah. FPS game that I ever played regularly was TF2. I'm a big really, fan I of the really Halo really games. Hmm. My, one of my friends when I was younger played that a lot, even though he was probably too young. I'm also a big fan of Doom, the Bethesda Doom. I think they did a great job. They did a great job making it modern, but still have the original Doom like pacing and and intensity. It's a uh -huh. good, it's a good game. But the Halo series is one I've always deeply enjoyed. Um, I I don't know. There was a there was an era where first person shooters I thought had a really they were had a kind of a heyday, but it they became very samey for a while. And I think a lot of them lost. A lot of them lost um, some of the some of the appeal. But I was there, kind of in the heyday of like FPS death matches. Um, you know, the early days of the Xbox 360. I think the I think the yeah. I mean, I was there too, but I didn't play any because I was too young. But my friend did, even though he sh shouldn't. Have, but <laughs> so my friend. It, so I watched him play it. Sometimes. Just on the couch. I I might have let Grizz play some games slightly slightly earlier than than it was because he because he wasn't one of those kids where I was concerned that he was going to get like worried about like hyper realistic violence or whatever. Mm -hmm. And because some of the rating systems are crap. Yeah, like Super Smash Bros. Is a brawl at a at a teen rating. Yeah, that's so dumb. That's so dumb. <laughs> Like my, my, no, I was I took it to like this, 
Okay, I used to go, when I was little, I used to go to a good daycare until I was like 10, right? Whatever my parents went to the gym, they'd take us to the daycare and have us hang out. They had a Wii there. Uh, and they'd sometimes let us bring games to play on, and that was cool. However, we brought Super Smash Bros, because I was like, okay, we play this all the time. And they were like, no, it's teen, rated teen. You can't play it. And it's just like, all right. It's, it, it, you literally could be rated E. It, it, it doesn't have any, it's like, the most cartoony-ass violence you've ever seen. You know, if Tom and Jerry is allowed, then that should be allowed. Right? I, just, I think you have to use a lot of your own judgment with any media if you have kids. Yeah. The, you can't just depend on them to, to do it for you. Yeah. Oh, kid, listen. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, but yeah, the entire ratings, the entire like um, NSRB rating system is specifically designed strictly to cover the, strictly to cover the rears of the, um, to specifically to just cover the rears of the corporations. Because let's be completely honest here, if the people who, if the people who, uh, if those corporations had any semblance of had any semblance of outside oversight when they were making their games, then the new Mortal, then the recent Mortal Kombat games would not exist. Especially oh, yeah. how visceral and gory those games are. Well, mm -hmm. that's the thing. Like, I let Grizz play the older Mortal Kombat's because they were very cartoony at that point. Oh, like, oh sorry. I but like, the, I don't know. There were like, I wouldn't let him play. I, I would never let him play something like Grand Theft Auto, right? Like when he was little, but it, but I wouldn't mind him playing something like um, uh, like World at War was one that I I didn't mind him playing a little bit of when I I turned off the once I I mean I turned off the gore mm -hmm. and so like I felt that 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 was the only thing that was a concern but I I think that there's a lot of games that are rated T that I don't get why and I don't. I don't know, I think... Uh, Company of Heroes, I think, was one he liked that I didn't get why it was rated as high as it was. Because I played that with oh, him, what? and I never saw anything objectionable. Yeah. They were, like, they weren't, like... It wasn't remotely realistic, you know? Yeah. I'm surprised I, but I, I'm just gonna say that from Zeronian's argument, and the, that actually implies that the ratings are a good thing. Because it, it implies that, uh, that it allows companies to be more free. By just sort of posting a rating saying, "Hey, don't play this unless no, that, you're old no, enough." No, I'm saying, no, I'm saying that the ratings are, I'm saying that the ratings are a bad thing because they can just get away with putting in whatever they, they can get away with putting whatever thing, whatever they want. The Otis is on the customer to, they put the Otis on the customer instead of the, um, instead I, of the manufacturer. It's a do not sue mechanism. When there was a lot of outrage about, there was a lot of outrage about the original because the yeah, original game rating system. Came out. I don't know how else you'd regulate like that because otherwise. Well, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's I'm not saying there's a better way. I'm just saying that like you can't okay, but depend on them to do it for you. That they're bad. Then I don't buy the argument that they're a bad thing. I, are, I didn't I say they're the argument that they're an annoying thing, but there are many things that are annoying but good. Um, you know, no, like no, my argument. Off. That's I not my like, argument. Like, okay, then, like, go, then like, I wouldn't call it. Off. Okay, then, I wouldn't call them bad, I would call it useless. Yeah, but that's not bad. My argument isn't useless that is it's... Useless is not bad. A, my argument isn't that it's not a thing that we should have, or that it's a thing that, that has a purpose. My argument is that it is so arbitrary that, in some cases, that you still have to be an informed consumer. Oh, 100%, but it's be I think it's better than not having it. Oh yeah, it gives you. It's yeah. a place to start. It's a place to start. I'll I'll definitely give it that. And there are parents who aren't tech savvy who aren't gonna know everything about the you media. Know, and I'd know. rather, even though I cited my example where it was very annoying, I still think it's better to err on the to be, better to err on the on the safe side. Well, I mean, old old video games was the wild west. Like before, like the Mortal Kombat era, there were some games that were just flat out like sexual. Uh -huh. that were on the market, and Atari, for one, hated it, because Custers that's one reason. Game. Yeah, yeah, and so that's why Nintendo instituted that steal of approval thing where you could not get something on their console without them 
explicitly approving it. Otherwise, they'd take you to court. They locked down their architecture and everything. So th there was definitely a, a need for for guardrails. I definitely agree with that. Mm -hmm. I just think that it's it's when you've got a system that uh, that treats um, it's like it's like when movies will will they'll rate a movie R because it's got swear words, but they'll leave a movie PG-13 uh -huh. despite having this role of violence. So, like, it just seems to me that, like, you, you have to make some value judgments here. Like, is exposing your kid to, like, like cartoon violence or swear words or photorealistic violence, you know, you have to decide what is, what are the things you're actually keeping an eye out for? What are, like... Oh... Ooh, that was so I on the line. You, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so it's it's just I'm just saying that like anytime you have an independent body, it's going to be like, oh yeah, we've got a quota. You can have uh, X number of swear words independent of context. I think you're gonna dumb down any sort of uh, comprehensive, like actual informative rating because it's just a quota thing abs that sucks sucks context out. Mm -hmm. well, that's not necessarily an end. That's not an anti-rating argument. That's an anti-arbitrariness argument. Yeah, and I but I think it's I think it's really hard to do one without the other. True, but if we're talking about pure fundamentals, no, I think it's got a place. I do think it's I do think it's important. I just think that it's it doesn't. It, it's frustrating. I one hundred percent agree yeah. that it's very yeah. frustrating. Yeah, but. Say yeah, I was there say, are things yeah. that are both frustrating and necessary. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm gonna say. Um, I'm not. I was gonna say I'm not anti ratings either. I I would prefer ratings with teeth. You know what I mean? What do you mean ratings with teeth? Um, ESRB basically ESRB done by a third ESRB done by a government third body. Um. I'd have to think about that. I'm not sure. I'm um, not sure if I so, agree. Like, I have to. I have to. I'll be right back. I'm sorry. I'll be on to. Oh, and now it's um, Viatorius versus LP for the final round. For phase one. I'll hurry. I don't want to miss the, the whole finals. I'll hurry. All right. Wow, we're already. Oh, yeah. It's already the final battle. Yeah, because I'm just going to go ahead and state, state this when it comes to, like, um, specifically games like um, Mortal Kombat with how visceral everything is. It's not because I'm not because I'm screamish. It's mostly for the sake of the people who are making the game. Because there have been reports of when those um, developers were making all the stuff involving Mortal Kombat, involving, like, the recent Mortal Kombat games, the, they had... There were reports that they all suffered from like PTSD making that game. For what? PTSD. Hmm. I feel and like something like that already fall uh, might fall under standard labor laws, though. Yeah, but the problem is though, not a lot of them. Oh no, that crab, the giant enemy crab, just sent both of them into space. Like, I'm not sure if a rating system would actually affect that. Like, that sounds like a discussion to be had between health officials yeah but that and, would also, and the, yeah this. that's why that's why i consider it why i would consider like a why i wanted it to be like a government like a third person government body even if it's not a rating system but, <laughs> but i know that it's i know that i'm getting off track but a third party I, a third yeah party i don't system. i think you're asking for something that's i think you're thinking of something different from a rating system yeah, you're just it, asking for, you're this, just you're more asking for labor protections which which is a, a different thing yeah we need more labor protections for um we do need more labor protections like all kinds of labor protections for 
game developers because they get screwed over so many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I'm that I agree with. Not with your previous argument. Yep, but we're in the final round of phase one. It's LP versus Viatorius. Sorry, I know I'm very pedantic, but I think it's very important to be specific with arguments with, like that. I understand. ACC, um, are you back yet? I don't think so. Okay. Oh no, that sucks. Squirrel got hit by a pitfall trap. Oof. Now it's, um, 3-2. Yep. Who shall win? We shall see. Like, um, I was gonna say, if you wanna add something... Like, if you wanna... Like, if there is one thing that I would add to the, um, ESRB rating, like... Live action serv like live action services should be a thing, but the problem is though is that live action services also um, like li not live action services like live services like really go after like um, go to, like um, vulnerable go to like like easily go after vulnerable communities like. Uh -huh. And that's another reason why I'm picking like an ESRB rating, like a rating score with teeth. Because if because if they had the teeth to do that, then um, there are particular things about a game that should not exist. I'm back. Hi. Welcome back. Oh no, kid is muted. That means bad things. Yeah, but we are in the final round. Is LP versus Viatorius? Yeah. LP, no. Mm, boy. Oh. Come on. Yeah, in the best for LP. That's oh. It. Winner is Viatorius. He moved. He is the final right, of Albania. Yeah. You know, you know what's. I was going to tell you. I forgot to tell you. Was the uh, funniest part about the new Mortal Kombat games? Yeah. What would that be? They, they had a lot of really, really realistic, really, really graphic violence. Yeah. But the thing people got mad about was that they made the female characters wear more clothing. Of all That's... the stupid things to get mad about, they're like, yeah, look, <clears throat> Jade is, Jade's, Jade's got, like, a hood and Jade armor and, like, actually looks like she's a desert nomad. Yeah, and they were yeah. actually mad about that. <laughs> is that weird? Like, dude, the internet's wild. That is extremely weird, yes. Oh, my food's here. I'll be right back. Okay. <clears throat> and if you all want to take the opportunity to, like, um, take a quick break, you all can because it's time to switch from Ultimania to Mega Man ZX Advent. We'll be right oh back. Okie doke. Thank you all for joining us, and congratulations, Viatorius, for making it to the final round. He killed Haggis. You got my mad respect. <laughs>